Hello and welcome. My name is Carsten Lützen. I'm a Scrum Master and Agile Coach. Today I'll talk about team dynamics, more specifically the Tuckman Edison model. If you like these videos, please subscribe and share, yeah, that would be awesome. In Agile, we strive towards stable teams. And the reason for this is when we look in literature and academia, right? And also just from experiences, stable teams simply just perform better. We can see why in this Tuckman model, for instance. Tuckman, the Tuckman model is a quite well-known model, which describes several phases that a team must go through in order to become, for instance, high performance, if that is a goal, as it often is. First off, when we form the team, we go into the forming phase, with this being performance and this being time. So, of course, when we put together some people and say, you're now a team, people start to form. Shortly after that, we go into the storming phase. That is where we try to figure out who is who, how do we do stuff, how can we communicate efficiently with each other, and conflicts will arise. That's perfectly normal within the storming phase. After the storming phase, when we are probably performing worse than when we started, we go into the norming phase. That is where we begin to find the common ground that everybody can agree on that this is our starting point. When we start to define how do we actually do X, Y, Z and so on. When we then go further in our team development, not all teams do this. Some teams never leave the norming phase. But after the norming phase, some people go into the performing phase. That is where we start to really perform. We're even more performant than before we were put together. People know each other, we can do stuff. And then we go into the high performing area. And that is where we all strive to be, right? We're talking about high performance teams. That is how we should build the organization and stuff like that. But the fun thing is here, how do we keep a team as a high performing team. What happens with the team up there? And that was when a guy Edison in 2008 enhanced this Tuckman model with this part. And then he says, so if we have a high performance team, one of the key successes to keep it as a high performance team is the informing phase to inform, share knowledge, share learnings with the rest of the organization. And of course, when we share learnings, it's important that we don't copy the learnings. That we don't say, because this high-performing team did this, everybody else should do the same. That won't work. But we can be inspired by each other, by these high-performance teams. But what might happen in a high-performance stable team that has been together for quite a long time, is that we go into this conforming phase instead. So we just conform, we don't challenge status quo, we get lazy, so to say. And that is dangerous, because all of a sudden our performance will drop, because we don't look into our problems in the same way, we don't have this fresh perspective. And with that in mind, the next part is then our deforming because slowly things will start to become looser. We'll lose performance because, yeah, we can just do it like we're always done. We are this uh, gods gave to humanity in this team, right? But in reality, we're actually lagging quite a lot. And then one consequence might be the adjoining phase that Tuckman also described where we simply disband the team because there is no real value here anymore. If we go in this conforming phase, I've seen that, then we need some kind of transformational event. We need to make sure that we again begin to challenge status quo. And that is this transforming phase as that Edison introduces. If we can in some way transform the team back again into a new norming phase, where we can figure out what is the new status quo, what is the new agreements that we have and the new common grounds we share, then we can go into the performing again. So we can see that over here, right, it repeats. And it's completely normal to go in this conforming phase, but we need to do something about it. And that is where we as scrum masters or agile coaches or managers 
need to be quite aware of what is it that we're actually going to do. It might be the time where we take a step back and get some fresh energy in to maybe facilitate some kickoff and some events, facilitate some discussions in how can we get out of this conforming phase. Because as Edison describes, this part is clearly dysfunctional, whereas this part is functional. And this part is also functional, meaning the storming phase is completely normal. Don't rush it. Give people time to find each other to figure out what is okay and what is not okay. Because storming is normal. Storming is not a dysfunctional team. Storming is a functional team struggling to find its way. And that is where we as Agile coaches or Scrum Masters can help them. But we cannot rush it. We cannot go through the storming phase in one afternoon with some clever team building activities. This takes time. Remember, storming is normal when we form teams. That is also why we have this mythical man month, right? Every time we meddle with the team composition, we will put them back on this we will push them back, and that is why we really want these stable teams. And one last thing is, if we are here right, remember we can have good practices that we can share, but we cannot copy it one to one. And here in the transforming phase, figure out what can we do, what is the dysfunctional things that we can treat, what are the things we want to change and make sure that we do in a new way, how can we kick off this and it might be bringing in a third party to help you get a fresh perspective and that's completely fine. I'm really looking forward to hear your reflection on this Talkman Edison model and how are you dealing with team dynamics. And if you have comments, questions, ideas, please let me know and share these videos. That would be awesome and subscribe. Then have a nice day.